continued from the previous file question and answers of pygmalion page 36 that is why she frankly tells higgins quote well if it was a gentleman you might ask me to sit down unquote with derisive feeling higgins responds indirectly as he asks colonel pickering quote shall we ask this baggage to sit down or shall we throw her out of the window unquote this indicates how the higher class people hate the working class his behavior towards eliza does not change even after her winning the bet for him all these events are indicative of the fact that the predomination at the class distinction or class consciousness yields snobbery which causes misunderstanding among the stakeholders. Shaw has made a threadbare analysis of this social disease through the dram dramatic discourse in the play Pygmalion. Question 7. How has G. B. Shaw projected the man-woman relationship in his play Pygmalion? The issue relating to answer. The issue relating to man-woman relationship haunted T. B. Shaw very much, as found in his major dramas and also his lectures. His Pygmalion exhibits the relationship between Higgins and women in general. Higgins and Eliza, Higgins and his mother. It is very interesting to note that when Pickering asks Higgins, Quote, are you a man of good character where women are concerned? Unquote. He replies, quote, have you ever met a man of good character where women are concerned? Unquote. Higgins, a confirmed bachelor, resists any sort of erratic association with women in his life. His attitude towards women in general is conveyed by his comment, quote, I suppose the woman wants to live her own life." Unquote. He is in fact totally indifferent to their sexual charm. The mother fixation as developed by Higgins between his mother and himself prevents him from having a quote normal unquote relationship with a woman. Shaw corroborates the issue of mother fixation in Higgins. They in bracket, young women, bracket closed, had an irresistible rival in his mother. Now let's try to explore Higgins' relationship with Eliza Doolittle. This has gathered multifarious responses from critics, directors, readers and viewers. According to Maurice Valency, this relationship suggests that Higgins honestly attempts to teach Eliza English phonetics and project her a lady. He is not interested in development of the emotional aspect of his student. In the sequel, Shaw suggests that Eliza, instead of marrying Higgins, chooses Freddy and lives happily ever after with him. On the contrary, the film version of the play ends with Eliza's return to the professor and thereby attempts to satisfy the intention of the common readers. Eliza is too sensitive and self-reflecting to tolerate her master's carelessness towards her. She demands good treatment coupled with respect from all including Professor Higgins and Pickering. In Act 2, when she comes to Higgins, she does not hesitate to resent the brutal treatment of Higgins towards her and does not allow him to tread over her. Page 37 When she wins his bet by presenting herself as a duchess in the party, Higgins only expresses his sense of relief instead of greeting her with emotional touch. She is so angry that she does not hesitate to throw his slippers at him and try to scratch his face with her nails. It is Higgins who considers her merely a common ignorant girl. There is absence of emotional bondage. Higgins cannot look into the violent behavior of Eliza which is an outcome of the indifference of his and Pickering's to her. 
Eliza feels the winning spirit and does not allow to be won by others. Finding it difficult to change her present mentality, Higgins tries to strike at her emotionally by saying, quote, you never asked yourself, I suppose, whether I could do without you, unquote. Eliza Unlessly replies, quote, don't you try to get round me, you will have to do without me, unquote. Higgins shifts his speech to arouse her sympathy. But I shall miss you, Eliza. In spite of his earnest appeal, Eliza does not change her mind and decides to marry Freddy. However, Higgins is dead against Eliza's proposed marriage with Freddy as he is much possessive of her present ladylike Eliza. The symbol of his success as a researcher in English speech. To conclude, let us quote from the sequel of the play where Shaw clearly deals with the relationship between Higgins and Eliza getting dim dimension due to Freddy's entrance. But at Eliza's age, a good-looking girl does not feel the pressure. She feels free to pick and choose. Eliza's instinct tells her not to marry Higgins. The man-woman relationship as projected in the play Pygmalion evidently suggests that Shaw is conscious in tackling this for the purpose of projecting his own idea relating to this. Shaw as a pragmatic social thinker has tried to develop sorry, tried to delve deep into the core psychological issues relating to mother son and teacher taught relationships. <coughs> Question eight show how G.B. Shaw has treated sentiment in his play Pygmalion. Answer. In Pygmalion, Shaw has addressed sentiment keeping in mind its central theme. S.C. Shen Gupta, a famous critic of Shaw, has attempted to explore how this has been dealt with in the whole action of the drama. According to Shen Gupta, Shaw has made sentiment one of the principal themes in his drama Pygmalion. Pygmalion, the Greek sculptor, carved a statue and had life breath breathed into it by Venus, after which he married the animated animate st statue. The Shavian Pygmalion, Professor Henry Higgins, expert in phonetics, picks up a flower girl named Eliza Doolittle teaches her standard English language and manners and then successfully passes her off as a duchess. However, she is a living being and therefore cannot be treated as a mere inanimate object or a machine. After the experiment, Higgins is in a sense of relief and joy as if he has achieved his triumph and his bet. Even now, he ignores the sentiments and sensitivity of the girl who protests against the dehumanized relationship between them. Page 38 And hurls his slippers at him. She wants to be respected as a free individual woman. It is thus evident that she has begun to feel for the professor and wants also to be felt for. In this backdrop, Sengupta analyzes the nature of Eliza's feelings for Higgins, with whom she has lived for some time. In the last act, the girl says that she would not marry him even if he proposed to her. Professor Higgins himself is insensitive to sexual emotions. If Eliza would not marry Higgins, what exactly does she want from him? His mother, Mrs. Higgins, who knows much about women, opines that it would have been all right if he had thanked her, petted her and told her how splendid she had been. Professor Higgins remains indifferent to this aspect of Eliza. Her protest against Higgins and subsequent decision to marry Freddie are indicative of Shaw's intention of treating a woman as human being, 
not a machine to be used. Eliza realizes that a little kindness as shown by her teacher is not sufficient to make life worth living and she leaves for the weak and poor. It is to be noted that Eliza's final decision is a part of a rebellion against the tutelage of a teacher who has looked upon her as his masterpiece. According to Sen Gupta, quote, if it springs from almost the same emotion which Irene feels for Professor Rubeck in Isbens when we dead awaken. Shaw is not only blind to romantic beauties in the works of Shakespeare, Dickens and others, but also not understand romantic in his own creation and cannot therefore do full justice to the deeper possibilities in his drama." Unquote. However, Shaw's treatment of the theme of Pygmalion suggests that the interaction and conflict of emotion is one of the most powerful aspects of the drama. But as Shaw avoids romance and sentiment as traced in the course of the action of the drama, Pygmalion has to end with, quote, an unbelievable anticlimax and a learned and thoughtful post, unquote. Question 9. Give a character sketch of Henry Higgins. Answer. Shaw in his preface to Pygmalion writes, quote, The reformer we need most today is an energetic, phonetic enthusiast. That is why I have made such a one the hero of the popular play." Unquote. The portrait of Henry Higgins in his this play holds some affinity with that of Harry, Henry Sweet, a famous English phonetician as claimed by Shaw himself. Later in his preface, Shaw states that perhaps Higgins may owe his Miltonic sympathies to later generation phonetician Robert Bridges, though here again he disclaims all portraiture. All this suggests that the real world experience has helped show, um, helped Shaw portray the character of Higgins, an expert in phonetics and speech training and an enthusiast in reforming English society by imparting knowledge to other people. Higgins has developed his knowledge in phonetics and conduct research in this field to study in his laboratory. At the beginning of the play, Higgins is introduced as follows. Page 39, quote, All are peering out gloomily at the rain except one man with his back turned to the rest wholly preoccupied with a notebook in which he is writing." Unquote. The one man is none but Professor Higgins, a 40 years old bachelor practicing phonetician. He has the capability to spot an Irishman or a Yorkshireman by his bro. He can place quote, any man within six miles and also place him within two miles in London. Unquote. Higgins takes up the responsibility of transforming Eliza, flower girl in Covent Garden, into a lady. He does not think of other constraints relating to the teaching of such girl belonging to the working class. In a way of conversation, he expresses his tirade against Eliza when he vents his wrath against her. But we can forgive him because of his admirable command of the English language. He simply rips to pieces a gutter snipe and a squashed cabbage leaf. Entire play is strewn with examples of fine speech. However, so far as the behaviors and manners are concerned, he cannot be honored. Even his mother, Mrs. Higgins, is critical of his behavior and she even does not expect the presence of her son in the midst of her guests on the at-home day. 
he does not give proper importance to Eliza. This may be because Higgins is a victim of pride and superiority. He is amazed at Eliza's poverty and states that in a very clever but tactless manner. He orders with pride Mrs. Pierce to clean Eliza with monkey brand soap, burn all her dirty clothes and wrap her up in brown paper until new ones arrive from the shop. When Eliza wins the bet for him by performing well in the party, he expresses his happiness but does not honor her personality properly. This has led to the outburst of Eliza's anger. She alleges that he has not taken into account her feelings and emotions. This is a part of the failure of this teacher come experimenter. Higgins in a way can be dubbed as a bundle of paradoxes. Though he is intellectually sound, his manners are those of the worst sort of petulant whining child. The positive aspect of his character is that he has enthusiasm in and sincere dedication to improving human race. He is not socially and culturally well-mannered person. In spite of certain oddities, Higgins possesses devotion to his profession. He is liked by the audience. He is Shaw's creative rebel who rejects middle class moralities and admires Mr. Doolittle for his honesty in asserting that he belongs to the undeserving poor class. Through Higgins, Shaw also sends a message that the societal improvement can be achieved through proper education. Even Eliza is charmed by her association with Higgins and Pickering. In spite of the drawbacks relating to his manners, neglect of human feelings, he excels all other characters of the play in his devotion to his profession. His appeal remains intact in the minds of the audience even after the end of the play. Page 40 Question 10 Discuss the character of Eliza with special reference to the theme of the play Pygmalion. Answer Artist develops a character on the basis of his or her observation of people belonging to the same society, class and sex of the character. It is Shaw who has shown his deep artistic insight in portraying his characters with close scrutiny and minute observation of the then society and people. Eliza Doolittle in the drama Pygmalion is an out and out Shavian creature. Eliza is one of Shaw's unique creations and the play centers round her growth from quote a thing of stone unquote a quote gutter snipe unquote and a quote squashed cabbage leaf unquote to a self-possessed lady endowed with human feelings surpassing in several ways her creator Professor Higgins. In Act 1, Eliza, a flower girl, takes shelter into the portico of St. Paul's Church to save her from rain. She is not at all a romantic figure. She is perhaps 18, perhaps 20, hardly older. She wears a little sailor hat of black straw that has long been exposed to the dust and soot of, the Lon of London and has seldom, if even, been brushed. Her dress, is, uh, her dress too is dirty. She exposes her vulgarity in the use of language and manner. She is trying to extract money from the well-dressed gentleman Colonel Pickering. When a bystander warns her about the recording of the words by the taker, that is Higgins, she apprehends that she is being suspected of being identified as a prostitute simply because she belongs to a class prone to that profession. She boldly asserts her virtue and sacredness. Her position is such that she cannot discriminate the sense of wonder, fear 
and the light in terms of expression. The initial impression created in the mind of the audience regarding Eliza is not a positive one and at this stage they cannot imagine her transformation which is found in Act 4 and 5. Higgins's interest in Eliza is created to a great extent during her visit at his residence come laboratory in order to adopt middle class manner middle class uh, middle class manners however higgins and her father mr dolittle despise the so called middle class morality she wants to be trained to mix with the people in that society for the purpose she must learn proper pronunciation and manners for acquiring that she has developed a dog like devotion to her two masters higgins and pickering professor higgins points out that she needs more training for her presentation in the party she had developed a soul of independence and self respect along the line of developing her language and manners under the guidance of professor higgins Her performance in the party has won the bet for Higgins. She is now transformed into a lady or a duchess competent in performing well like an upper class lady. But she is not happy at her present position. She apprehends of the loss of her ability to earn for herself by selling flowers. When Higgins suggests that she can marry a worthy husband, she replies with a scorn page 41 quote i sold flowers i did not sell myself now you have made a lady of me now i am not fit to sell anything else i wish you had left me where you found me unquote it is evident that she is well aware of her position and thinks of her future She decides to marry Freddy and this decision makes her different from Pygmalion's from Pygmalion's Galatea who condescends that to marry her creator. At this point her behavior in presence of Mrs. Higgins, her two masters and also other persons enliven her and projects her as a living human being who is emotionally and intellectually sound. She is also a symbol of feminist individualism which Shaw Shaw intends to portray in his modern Pygmalion. It is well known that Shaw intends to put forward several ideas through her character portrayal. So far we find Eliza's transformation from a mere gutter snipe to a lady due to the training provided by mr higgins and pickering it suggests that socio economic condition is not a barrier to education education can bring change in the life of any individual even belonging to a backward community eliza has been projected as a living being not as a doll Shaw's innovative touch has made her impressive to one and all. Question 11. How does Shaw projects his attitude to poverty and middle class hypocrisy through the character portrayal of Alfred Doolittle in Pygmalion or give a brief character sketch of Alfred Doolittle in Pygmalion? Answer. One of the major issues Shaw wants to deal with in this play Pygmalion is middle class hypocrisy under the guise of morality though all other characters are concerned more with the growth and development and ultimate fate of Eliza Alfred Doolittle is not at all interested in that the purpose of including him in the action of the drama is in a way to expose Shaw's attitude to poverty and middle class hypocrisy he represents the undeserving poor and appears and appears only twice on the stage he is peculiar kind of paradox as shown with the tone of irony and humor 
When Eliza is taken as a trainee by Professor Higgins, Mr. Doolittle appears before Higgins and Pickering with a claim on his daughter. He puts charges against Higgins on blackmailing him and duping his daughter. His initial statement and claims impress us that he is a man of responsibility. However, when Higgins asked him to take his daughter away, he exposes his own intention by asking him to give him five pounds in exchange for his daughter. When Higgins asked him if he would sell his daughter for five pounds, Doolittle answered, not in a straightforward way. In reply to Pickering's question, quote, have you no morals men, unquote, Doolittle, in bracket, unabashed, bracket close, replies, quote, can't afford them, governor, neither could you, if you were as poor as me. Not that I mean any harm, you know, but if Liza is going to have a bit out of this, why not me too? Unquote. Thus expose Victorian, this exposes Victorian society. Continued in the next file.